Ladies and gentlemen, the President and Vice President of the United States. On April 25th, 1995, history was made on the Iowa State University campus. President of the United States, Bill Clinton, Vice President Al Gore, and Secretary of Agriculture, Dan Glickman, all came to the ISU campus to participate in the National Rural Conference. Held in the Great Hall of the Memorial Union, the conference was a chance for the three members of the U.S. Executive Branch to meet with select rural leaders, farmers, and agribusiness people about the concerns of the rural economy. With the country's leadership in Ames on that day, the ISU campus literally became the White House, with scores of presidential staff members accompanying the entourage. With this came some monumental logistical tasks for many in the Iowa State community. The incredible uh, pride and energy that people brought to bear in preparing for it and the sense of satisfaction they had with its success were really astounding. There were over 700 people, mainly volunteers, who helped pull this thing off from people who handed out tickets and served as ushers at Hilton Coliseum to people in the telecommunications area that put together this incredible communications network that's part of the presidency. We really had two weeks of real time to work in preparation for the event. Uh, this is a very, very short time on a university campus. The university normally is a rather uh, a slow moving kind of mechanism for getting things done and all of a sudden we've got a project that has a very short timeline, uh, heavy demands, uh, a lot of, of unusual requests coming at us. They needed uh, bookcases built at the last minute, built, stained and varnished and uh, installed yet that night. So at six o'clock Monday night before the presidential visit we start cutting up oak plywood and building bookcases. Well, I got home around 6.30 uh, Monday evening and the phone call, the phone rang and Lynn Sealert was on the phone asking for a strange favor. And what he asked for, which I, surprised me a lot, was he needed a, a large number of agricultural books to put on some bookshelves that the physical plant staff had just finished making for the Great Hall. So I ended up pulling together some staff from the library and we started working around 7.30 in the evening and put together around 675 books and ultimately ended on some rolling carts that we transported from the library to the Memorial Union. And there were people uh, at 11 o'clock at night literally hauling stacks of books from the Parks Library to the Memorial Union to add that extra special dimension to a conference that I think everybody uh, was really impressed by. I'd originally it started with a, a quite a simple table that uh, uh, was to be draped in draperies or cloth or linen of some kind and it graduated to what was considered a fine piece of furniture. I received the uh, order to build the table, the final drawings to build the table on Thursday evening and it had to be finished by four o'clock the next day so that the the uh, finishes could be applied. Because of Bill Clinton's uh, allergies there can't be any polyurethane applied to furniture that he'll be around uh, 72 hours before he's there. So we were rushed to uh, finish it before Saturday morning so that it would be free of, of gases and he wouldn't be affected by it. Josh King was the artistic director at the, at the Union, at the Great Hall, and he visited the, uh, the Parks Library and uh, insisted that we move the Grantwood murals from the library to form a backdrop for the, for the uh, uh, conference uh, table and, and, the, and the setting, and uh, was a little bit surprised when I said absolutely no. Uh, I think he knew that. but. Uh, to that point, we tried to be very accommodating in, in uh, meeting all those needs. 
we didn't have enough furniture in the lounges, and so we brought furniture from the hotel rooms down. And so the crew got quite a workout. We had um, quite a combined effort from general service and from the custodial staff here, lifting some of those hide beds down through the elevators. And it was pretty extensive. They were going to fly up a lighting designer from Florida to do the lights. So they called him up and he said, no, just move the lights around like this and call me back in an hour and I could talk a blind man through this focus. So as it turned out, that was pretty good because the guy that we had on the crew that day to focus the lights is legally blind. An hour later, I found myself moving from chair to chair with a light meter in one hand and a cell phone in the other, talking to two guys that couldn't see what was going on. Things really started to cook Sunday morning. 8 o'clock Sunday morning, we had a crew in the, in the Great Hall laying carpet, 5,000 feet of, of carpet squares. And that was how we started our Sunday morning. By Sunday evening, we had the carpet down, we had platforms in place, and we had the, the, um, the um, conference table um, set up where we wanted it to be. Uh, a very long day for a lot of people. When they put the carpet down, they taped it to the floor. And when they pulled the carpet up and pulled the tape up, it left lines all the way across the Great Hall. So the custodians had to go in and scrub the floor with their, on their hands and knees trying to get the residue from the tape that was still left off. The White House communications people wanted their bill the day of the event at 10 o'clock in the morning on that Tuesday. And then they paid it with a visa card. We worked directly with the stewards. There were three of them. They uh, watched us while we were preparing the food. They had to know my name and they wanted to know spices that I was adding when I was, you know, spicing up some of the food. And I finally, I said, Is, if there's something you know he'd prefer, I would be happy to change or use something else. And they said, no, that if there is a, they just, and they were writing everything down. And they said that was just in case there was an allergic reaction or something happened, they just want notes and information to go back later to, to check. I have not done a bomb sweep before. I've done a lot of interesting things in my life, but had never done a bomb sweep. Um, I came in at uh, 3.30, uh, uh, and I came in to be supportive uh, of the bomb sweep. I was called to the ground floor because there was a brown package that was tied up. What had happened was one of our staff members, in, in being neat and tidy, had tied up about four tiles after he had finished a project and set them off to the side. And um, the Secret Service were not sure that that wasn't a bomb. There was a pop machine, which we couldn't find a key to. And since we couldn't open it, we had to move it out of the building. Uh, there was a, another credenza-type piece of furniture up in the uh, basketball offices that no one has ever had a key to. We have no idea what's in the drawer, but it was removed from the premises. At one point, I looked out at both of the ashtrays that were outside the entrance to the Union, and they were filled with debris, old apple cores and orange peeling and sack and gum wrappers and things that persons had deposited as they waited to come in. I went outside and cleaned up, you know, poured those into the sack, walked back inside the building, and the Secret Service were on me like that. And thank you, President Jeske, and all of you at Iowa State for making us feel so welcome. I thank the band for playing, and I'm glad they provided seats for you to see the event. When I used to play at things like this, they never gave us a seat. So I'm glad to see your smiling faces, and thank you, singers, for singing and for looking so wonderful up there. As, as soon as he's, he's uh, said his uh, last, uh, he usually ends with, and God bless America, uh, we were to break into song, and uh, that was to cover uh, that moment uh, of applause. This guy comes running up the steps, and I mean, he was, he was almost, his attitude was almost uh, angry, like he couldn't believe we were all leaving. And he was getting us all back together and said, uh, the president has requested to meet you personally backstage. We uh, were led uh, actually downstairs uh, across the main floor of, Hin of Hilton, then down 
the back, sort of the basement entrance there, uh, the east entrance to the Hilton Coliseum, where there's a huge sort of cavernous area there where there were the two black limousines waiting for the president and the vice president. We started singing this African piece that he had requested, and then that's when he walked out. That was pretty neat. And then the president came up, and he wanted to know, what does that, what do those words mean? And I told him, it means, we are so glad you are here. Then he waded into the choir and uh, shook hands. Eventually, they got to the point where they were actually uh, a part of the choir. I think, surprisingly, uh, President Clinton was overwhelmed with the singing. Um, I'm sure he's heard a lot of singing groups, but he seemed really impressed with our group. It's a, an incredible experience to, uh, to have the chance to sing for the president and vice president, and uh, for him to have decided to give some extra time to, to greet this group was really, uh, really special, something they won't forget. When we were able to work out this opportunity for our students and our faculty to come and sit on the stage and observe, I believe they were provided an opportunity that any one individual only gets maybe once in a generation. They saw the president, the vice president, the governor, uh, a senator, uh, other uh, cabinet officers, all in the same room, all within a few feet of each other. You realize at that moment that the President of the United States and the Vice President were right there, you know, in a room that we're commonly in, setting up and everything. It was just kind of a unique feeling, I guess. The day of, I started getting kind of nervous on the way over here, thinking, God, this is, you know, we're cooking and preparing food for the President of the United States. The banter that went on as we assembled the table always came down to, well, this is Bill's spot, or or Bill will, will sit here, and Al will sit here. And of course, certainly there's a bit of pride in, in the idea that the president will be there, and, and, uh, and this will essentially be part of the, of the whole program. Looking back, I guess I was amazed at the willingness of everybody just to pitch in and do what needed to get done. At Iowa State found out that people could work together, and when there was something major that needed to be done that um, that everyone chipped in and made it happen. Preparation for the event was the outstanding piece for me, not, not really the event itself. And getting to know a whole group of people across the university that I had not previously known was fun. Kind of a general rule of thumb for me is uh, anything involving the president, double your staff and double your food and <laughs> be prepared for absolutely the wildest uh, you know, uh, type of event. I think the reaction from people here is, is initially was exhaustion. Everybody was just uh, uh, really tired uh, um, in, in, a, in a bit of a fog. Uh, now they look back on it and say, yeah, that was fun. This was like probably the most important thing that we'd ever set up for here, and it's just fun to be a part of that. It's absolutely phenomenal that over 700 people had their heads and hands in it, and we got it done. It was, in a very real sense, uh, a, a moment, a demonstration of great pride and capability. We pulled off the first ever National Rural Conference as well as it can possibly be done. I want to thank the president of this fine university and all the people who have worked so hard to make this a success. I want to remind all of you, I think you can see today, that uh, we care a lot about these issues. I have learned a lot and we will act on what we have learned. Thank you so very much.